hype has been building for this game for a week, a top 20 battle in Fayetteville, Arkansas tonight. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. For the second time ever, UConn and Arkansas will meet. Both teams ranked in the top 25. Both teams averaging over 85 points per game. So excited to be with you, Courtney Lyle, alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. Holly Rowe will also be joining us. And I know UConn fans want to know, is Paige Beckers going to play? Well, she's in the starting lineup tonight, so we will see her. Well, it's going to be important to have Paige Beckers on the floor. She leads UConn in points, assists, steals, and from the three-point line. But now, how hard can she go? Yeah, it was a week ago today against Tennessee. Let's take you back to Knoxville with about three minutes left to go on this play. Beckers, the outstanding freshman for the Huskies, injured her right ankle. She would leave the game for a couple of minutes, but re-enter in a huge way with 25 seconds left. The biggest shot of her young career as a UConn Husky to put the Huskies up by five and eventually help them get the win. But the UConn is going to have their hands full with Chelsea Dungy. She is pro ready. She is that po that player that has a versatile skill set. She has the ability to shoot the three. She can drive to the basket. She can also get you to the free throw line and get those easy attempts. Well, Tim, times like these, you've got to be ready when your phone rings to answer it. You never know, Holly Rowe, who's going to be calling. That's right. After UConn has had six games postponed or canceled, they were looking for games. And Junior Oremo told us just about a week ago they saw a couple of SEC schools go on pause, and he said, we pounced. He called Mike Neighbors at Arkansas, and Mike said, I am so honored that Gino called. It tells me how far our program has come, that he thinks that we would be a quality opponent. They agreed quickly to play the game, and Mike isn't the only one excited. They are expecting a Division I record tonight, fans in the stands for this huge match. And Holly, that's going to be about 450 more fans than UConn saw against Tennessee last week. Seventh ranked opponent that Arkansas has faced this season, and it's UConn. And Arkansas starting out in a man-to-man -man defense and already forces a turnover. Arkansas starting five, it's been pretty consistent for them this season. They rely a lot on the three ball and a lot on free throws. Good to see Paige Beckers back in the starting lineup. Did not play in their last game against Georgetown. We saw Nika Mule, the freshman from Croatia, run the point a lot in her absence. I'm keeping an eye on Chelsea Dungy being guarded by nobody right there, and she knocks down the three. Chelsea Dungy already with all of Arkansas's points. I mean, this is a player started her career at Oklahoma, transferred to Arkansas, and has climbed her way up the Arkansas record books in just three seasons. I think she is a match-up nightmare. She plays the four but she's got the guard skills. She stretches the defense, and right now, Kristen Williams has the assignment. They'll swing it to Amber Ramirez in the corner. That's a three for her, her first three in the last two games. And it looked like that time Connecticut was in a zone, I, and Mike Neighbor said he's only seen three possessions, if that, against the zone, and he has scored every time. Olivia Nelson, Nelson Adota has got to make her presence felt. She's the tallest player on the floor. And Kristen Williams has all of UConn's points. No surprise, the Arkansas native returning to her home state. Yeah, UConn is in a zone. 2-3. Dungey turns it over. Williams off the window. That's your concern, playing against Connecticut. It's not just defending them, but you take a bad shot or turn the ball over, they're going to make you pay. 
Destiny Slocum from mid-range. Doesn't get the bounce. Taylor Thomas will give the rebound up to Aubrey Griffin. Aubrey Griffin, so physical, she's going to the free throw line. Arkansas will be a little short-handed today. The major loss here, these are the players that are not available today due to COVID-related issues. Jalen Mason is the one who has really come off the bench and give them a lot of minutes. The good news is Arkansas does have their two mainstays with Marquisha Davis and Aaron Barnum who come off the bench. But not having Jalen Mason, that is a experienced player that Mike Neighbors relies on. And when she comes in, he knows that she's going to really fill the gap. She's kind of the glue. She will hit the big shot when needed or make sure the ball gets exactly where it's supposed to be. Yeah, so Mason not available tonight. Arkansas with just eight available players. They've only been playing about eight or nine players their last handful of games anyway. But something to keep an eye on. Michaela Daniels in the corner. She is so important to what the Razorbacks do. And you really don't notice that she's a sophomore on the floor with really graduate seniors that are on the floor right now. Yeah, earned the start in every game last season as a freshman. That's how good she is. Ivino Westbrook. UConn changing up the defense, trying to get Arkansas off balance, but the Razorbacks look real comfortable right now. Dungey with the spin, but great defense from Aubrey Griffin. Slocum has to kick back out. But you notice no offensive rebounding attempts from Arkansas. Right away, they get back in transition defense, get their defense set. Olivia Nelson Adota just has the ball taken away by Destiny Slocum. Up ahead to Daniels, picked off by Williams. Beckers, count it, going to the line. That ankle looks fine to me. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't look like it. Uh-uh, with that step through and the finish, and she said, oh yeah, that two is good on her way to the free throw line. Paige Beckers, the number one overall player in the 2020 class, already had a huge impact on UConn, Holly. That's right, and you know, she's been trying to get that right ankle right since she twisted it in the in Tennessee game. She's been in a boot ever since then, lots of game ready rest, and she's been on the bike to keep her cardio up. She's using modalities to control pain like electrical stimulation, and she looks pretty good and quick to me today. And Carolyn, what differences did you see in that Georgetown game when they didn't have Beckers on the floor? Well, it was Avina Westbrook that really had to step up and take charge on the floor from that point guard position. And she looked good to me. In the last four games, Avina Westbrook has been shooting almost 68%. She didn't make a lot of mistakes. She didn't when she was at Tennessee. So she has really just made her transfer into UConn seamless. And remember, Avina Westbrook has experience playing against this Arkansas team and against when she was at Tennessee at 24 points against Arkansas in their last meeting. She knows their style of play. Here's Westbrook. Nelson Adota. Almost had her pocket picked. It's a big night for Kristen Williams. What it's like to come back to her home state. UConn's Kristen Williams playing back at home in her home state of Arkansas for the first time. She said, I'm so excited to go back to where I fell in love with the game of basketball. The last time she played in the state was in her high school state championship game for Central Arkansas Christian. She said, Coach Oriema was there. We got a cool picture together, and she has not played at home since. She's got a group of about 10 people here tonight, including her mom and sister. But we have to say hi to Dad, Sherman Williams, who's home after knee surgery. He couldn't be there tonight, but I promised her we would say hello to her dad. And Holly, her high school coach, her trainer, and some of her former teammates are supposed to be there at the game tonight also. 
Yeah, she had so many ticket requests, guys, that she did have to tell some people no. But, I mean, what a time for her to come home to because she had some of her best practices right before that Tennessee game. Had 20 points against Tennessee, then 17 points in their last game against Georgetown. She's already 3-3 three three from the field tonight. She's playing well. UConn has now hit its last eight shots thanks to that shot from Avina Westbrook. Both of these teams average over 85 points per game. Arkansas sixth in the nation in points per game. UConn tenth. Marquisha Davis from the elbow. They talked about UConn's defense and their ability to keep the Arkansas players in front of them. And the thing that Gino Ariema wants to do is keep Arkansas off the three-point line and force tough twos. Yeah. Offensive foul on Aaron Barnum. Kristen Williams steps up and takes the charge. Gino Ariema. In that Tennessee win a week ago tonight, picked up his 1,100th career win, the fastest coach to get to that mark. I think he was a little concerned in Knoxville, but he said he just wanted to hang around and give his team an opportunity at the end and down the stretch. They made, UConn made the big plays. How fun was that game, though, to see that rivalry back and to have it be so competitive just for women's basketball and as a whole? It was a pretty game to watch when you saw the way not only even though Paige Booker Beckers struggled from the floor It was the other players around Avina Westbrook stepped up Kristen Williams and then for Tennessee Ray Burrell put on a show She was hitting shots hitting threes even with a hand in her face Yeah, it was interesting to watch Paige Beckers in that one the first real big test for the highly touted freshman She was 2 of 13 before she hit that big three-pointer to put UConn up for good. I thought she handled herself really well in that game. Mike Neighbors, Mike Neighbors is still in some minutes for Chelsea Dungy getting some rest with that potential short bench. And guys, you talk about Paige Becker really struggling in that game against Tennessee. Gina Orama said there was a point in the game where, you know, she quit shooting because she thought her shooting was hurting her team and she was letting the team down. But he basically said, if you don't shoot, we're not going to win this game. She got her confidence back and really did a nice job. Kristen Williams is really doing a nice job of making herself available. And Gino talked about Krista Williams and talked about her being more patient offensively. She had to wait on screens. And then when she got open, then take a breath, make it, and then make a decision of what you're going to do with the basketball. And that really has showed a lot of improvement in her offensive production. Now you look at her last three games, she's averaging 18 points per game over that time span. That's about three more points than her season average. Dungy back in for Arkansas. Amber Ramirez. Oh, Arkansas almost had the rebound, but it goes out of bounds off of Davis. We'll have a full day of college hoops on Saturday, culminating with these two SEC Big 12 Challenge games. Number 15, Kansas, squaring off against number 18, Tennessee, in Knoxville. That one's at 6 Eastern. Then we head to Rupp Arena for number 5, Texas and Kentucky. Only met twice in their storied history. Those games coming for you on Saturday. For Mike Neighbors and company, this is their seventh ranked team they have faced. They already took down a top five team earlier this season when they defeated number four Baylor. Slocum turns it over. And you caught changing up their defenses again. Looked like a little one, two, two. They swing it to Kristen Williams. And you see Aubrey Griffin crashing the offensive boards. She is such a good rebounder. She is 
a guard converted to that four position, and she has embraced the physical play of playing in the paint. She's just such a natural athlete. Griffin's going to be called for the foul there. I was just looking at her rebounding numbers over her last four games. She's had 30 total rebounds, but 20 of those, Carolyn, have been offensive rebounds. And that's what Connecticut needs. Because a lot of times you've got Olivia nelson Adota who likes to, to shoot it from the perimeter. Gino said she is a 6'5", two-guard wannabe. So it's been Aubrey Griffin that's done the work inside crashing the glass. Well, Chelsea Dungy at the free throw line for the first time tonight. You saw her numbers there, a very good free throw shooter. This is her specialty, scoring and getting to the free throw line. She's so quick off the bounce, and when she decides to go, she'll make a few moves, and her crossover right to left, it's dead. Now. Fifth turnover for UConn. Here's Ramirez, drives and kicks to Dungy for three. There's about a five second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Griffin takes the two. Took it back. It's going to be Arkansas ball. The savviness of Aubrey Griffin just to stay after it. It just got away from her, went out of bounds. Slocum setting it up for the Razorbacks. Five seconds. Over to Taylor Thomas. She'll go to the free throw line. 0.6 seconds left here in the first quarter. And what does Arkansas do? They keep the defense busy with Chelsea Dungy on the other side to really leave Taylor Thomas alone when Nelson Adota goes over to help. And that that's the second foul on uh, Olivia, uh, Olivia Nelson Adota. That's big because without her on the floor, that could really negate the size advantage. A freshman that got, UConn has Aaliyah Edwards that could come in, but she's also found prone as well. Thomas drops them both in. That will be the first quarter. UConn on top after 10 minutes here in Fayetteville, 22 to 18. Arkansas Razorbacks have played the most games in the country, and they have very strict COVID protocols. You can see from how they do their huddles, players have to be very spaced and very distant. You have to sit by players who have had or have not had COVID. Mike Neighbor says that he spends as much time on a game plan as he does on his COVID in information. And you can see that little chip from Connexon. It is mandatory for all SEC chain teams. That connection chip, has a contact tracing chip that they look on their computer and make sure that people who've been diagnosed with COVID or contact traced out can still play in this game tonight. Six players out for Arkansas, despite all those measures. Mike Neighbors has taken everything he possibly could into a consideration. And even in the national anthem, if you watch how Arkansas is lined up, it's two rows of players and he makes sure that they are six feet apart. Yeah, Arkansas has even been traveling in on the day of the game just to try to limit as much contact with anybody else as possible. But as Holly mentioned, six players out for Arkansas. The starting five intact, their main two options off the bench still available tonight. UConn, meanwhile, we've seen Paige Beckers come back after missing the last game with an ankle injury. Anna Makarat still not available tonight. And then everybody's talking about this, the freshman, Sailor Poffenbarger, who has joined the team. She was eligible to practice this week, but we don't expect to see her in this game. 
One thing to keep an eye on is rebounding. Right now, Arkansas is winning the battle of the boards. And I noticed in the last offensive possession for Arkansas, Taylor Thomas and Chelsea Dungy went to the boards for an offensive rebound. At the beginning of this game, Mike Neighbors was sending all five back in transition. Arkansas in their last game, they lost on a last second shot to Georgia. They were out rebounded by the Lady Bulldogs 42 to 33 in that game. But the biggest difference I saw in that game, Chelsea Dungy went to the glass. She was aggressive and this young woman is competing. He, she, he is ti she's tired of losing to the ranked teams that they have played this year and realizes rebounding is going to make the difference. Yeah, she had a season high eight rebounds to go along with her 25 points in that loss to Georgia. But yeah, Arkansas's record against ranked teams, they're one in five this season. That one is a big one. It was Baylor. They were able to take down the Lady Bears back in December. Beckers to inbound under the basket for UConn. Westbrook. Aaliyah Edwards on the roll. Beautiful. Teams that Arkansas has lost to, has been, that they have been able to throw over the top. Edwards is one of those players that wants to get in the paint. Amber Ramirez answers with a three ball. How aggressive has she been tonight? She is already, and it's early in the second quarter, had more shot attempts today than she did the whole game against Georgia. And just two points against Georgia for Ramirez. But you watch Edwards off the ball screen, slip to the basket, and Avina Westbrook can deliver it, and she puts it perfectly at the corner of the backboard, and Edwards can go right into her shot. Just watching Avina Westbrook, I feel like she already knows this UConn team, her teammates, so well. She had a season-high nine assists against Georgetown in their last game, and just looked so smooth and so smart. She plays with such poise when she has the basketball, Avina Westbrook. Becker short on the shot. Edwards is there, but in traffic. Arkansas will take it. You see Dungey in there battling. It doesn't matter. Edwards is bigger inside, but Chelsea Dungey, and she's got that moxie. She's got that uh, dog in her to go to the glass. <laughs> Swipes in for the rebound, smoke him in the corner. But that creates an extra possession for Arkansas when Taylor Thomas went in there to the boards. Rebounding battle is even at 10 apiece. Nine turnovers for UConn. It's huge. Michaela Daniels. Arkansas has hit five three-pointers. They average nine a game. Edwards again down inside. This is Nika Jules setting things up for UConn. We saw her run their offense in their last game. Number 10 in the Navy jersey. Crosses the three. You got a lot of experience against Georgetown. She was a little hesitant to shoot the ball at first, but you can tell she's more confident. And I'm sure Gino Ariema addressed, listen, you're open, you got to pull the trigger. Well, she said after that game, she wasn't satisfied with her performance. She really wants to work on improving in practice and translating that into a game. 
Dungey's already in double figures. Edwards has been really big for UConn. Remember, Olivia Nelson and Dota has two fouls. And Edwards, I think, is what the, the type of post that UConn needs in the game against an Arkansas team because she is aggressive in the paint. She had an impact on that play. Arkansas struggles when there is a rim protector down low. Mike Daber is screaming for a timeout on the other end of the floor. Just a three-point game in Fayetteville. Huskies on top. trade halftime report a major upset in the ACC it has to do with NC State plus an SEC powerhouse showdown that's coming up at the half look always is still in the stands even though we're not actually there <laughs> Courtney Lyle Carolyn Peck and Holly Rowe excited to be with you what a great game we have already had just the second meeting between these two programs the first since 1998 when Sue Bird was a freshman at UConn and things didn't go so well for Sue Bird. Arkansas was able to upset the Huskies. No, Arkansas, uh, UConn actually won that game 100 to 64 back in 1998. Gary Blair you are was the coach. <laughs> yeah, Gary Blair was the head coach at Arkansas. And eventually took Arkansas to the final four while he was in Fayetteville. So we're kind of keeping an eye on uh, another freshman's debut against Arkansas. Subert had four points in that game so far. Paige Beckers has five. I'm sure Subert in the studio is keeping an eye on Paige Beckers' stats. With this freshman outdo her in her freshman day, freshman first time playing Arkansas. Subert turned out okay. So <laughs> even yes, though she only had she did four points against Arkansas. You know, Gino talked about, he talked about the three guards that Arkansas plays that have that scoring ability, and he could only remember back to probably one year where he only had two guards, and that was in the 2002, 2003. Well, the two guards that he had were Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi. You don't need much else. <laughs> Got that kind of lineup. Talk about loaded. And a travel called on Marquisha Davis. Arkansas has been aggressive. We, they're shooting 41% from the field right now. UConn hasn't allowed an opponent to shoot over 40% from the field this season. But keep an eye, Arkansas has only gotten to the free throw line, only four free throw attempts. They'd like to have 30% of their scoring coming from the free throw line. Yeah, in a perfect world, Mike Neighbors wants 40% from behind the arc from three. 30% off of layups, 30% from the free throw line. That was so big in their win over Baylor. They hit 30 free throws in that game. Davis driving in. Kristen Williams got off to a really hot start, hit her first three shots. Ramirez with eight. I thought for Arkansas to be in this game, have a chance to win, Amber Ramirez had to be aggressive offensively, and she has been exactly that. She's looking for a shot. 
Well, after that loss to Georgia, where Amber Ramirez was 0 for 4, the very first player that Mike Neighbors spoke to the next morning was Amber Ramirez. He said, I have no doubt she is going to break out of that shooting slump, and has she ever tonight. She is a terrific shooter, 45% on the season, fifth in the SEC, and she's already been on fire tonight, making most of her shots. She is 3 for 7 from the field tonight. Yeah, Look at the games are threes. You look in the game notes and it has Splash Sister, the picture next to Splash Sister, that's Amber Ramirez because she is offensive-minded. She can shoot the three and now has added the mid-range to her game. Spent two seasons at TCU before transferring to Arkansas and really fitting into this style of play. Dungey from range. She's up to 13 points. Edwards back to Kristen Williams. Offensive foul on Williams. Chelsea Dungey is playing like she is sick of losing to ranked teams. And you watch her here, off the screen, from the handoff, knocks down the three, and then just this possession defensively, she was the one that came down and sacrificed her body, drawing the offensive foul, drawing the charge. Gets the home roll on that one. It's just a one-point game. Fifteen points already for Dungy. Avina Westbrook with the floater rattles out. Jump ball and then Yukon will keep it thanks to the possession arrow. The two things that have improved I have seen from Arkansas. Number one, the mentality of Chelsea Dungy has always been there. But they're also aggressive on the rebounding side of the ball. 12 rebounds already for Arkansas. Four of those have been offensive. UConn's led by as many as eight. <coughs> oh, Leah Edwards just, <laughs> she has that size advantage. What an aggressive and tough player. And for a freshman to rebound like she does. Just watch how aggressive she is. She just follows the flight of the ball and stays after it, even though there are three Arkansas players around her. Foul's called on Riley Langerman. And Arkansas will take over here. Shot clock still on. Wouldn't be surprised. Arkansas looked to go two for one. Go score quick. No? They love to get a shot up within the first nine seconds of that shot clock. That's a two from Ramirez. Razorbacks back on top, but UConn can take the last shot. This is Griffin. Back to Avina Westbrook. Aubrey Griffin in the corner! Corner pocket for the Yukon Huskies and Aubrey Griffin. And Gina Ori, Emma and crew will take a lead into the locker room in Fayetteville. Aubrey Griffin, that's just her second three on the season. Couldn't have come at a better time. UConn shoots 59% in the first half, and Gino is standing by with Holly. Coach Rory Emmett, Chelsea Dungy has 15 points for Arkansas in that first half. What do you have to change defensively to slow at? her down? Where? Hey, Coach, do you hear Holly? Coach Rory Emma. All right, we're trying to get Coach to hear us. Give us just one moment. We're going to go to break. We'll be back right after this.
This one's living up to the hype. Halftime here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. UConn leads at the half, but not by much. A 43-41 to 41 lead for the Huskies. The most points they've given up in a half this season. Courtney Lyle and National Championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck back with you. And normally if a team shoots 60% from the field in the first half, we'll be talking about them. But Chelsea Dungy for Arkansas was fantastic and had 15 points. She is playing like she is ready to get off this streak of losing the ranked team. She is playing like a woman on a mission. She has done it on the defensive side. She has been aggressive, attacking the basket. She has been able to score in space. And then she does what she does best. After the pin down from the three-point line, yeah, that's money right there. Chelsea Dungy playing like a woman on a mission. She averages 21 points per game, already has 15. As we mentioned, UConn hit 59% from the field, but they gave up 41 points, the most of any half this season. Important to note for UConn, Olivia Nelson Adota only played 10 minutes in the first half, got into foul trouble, did not score, and did not have a rebound. I was surprised to see her start in this second half because Edwards, Aaliyah Edwards came in in 10 minutes. She had six points. So she was productive, that freshman for UConn when she came in the game. Yeah, Edwards gave him some really good minutes. As you already see, Chelsea Dungy has hit a shot here in the third quarter. She's now up to 17 points. Just the second time these two teams are playing, the first time since 1998. Arkansas is trying to get back on track against ranked teams. They are one and five against ranked opponents this season. Dungy to spin. My goodness. She's going after it. If she has to do it by herself right now, Chelsea Dungy is getting it done for Arkansas. 19 points. Remember, she has the most 30-point games in Arkansas history with 10 for her career. Beckers off target. Five points for Paige Beckers. The Chelsea Dungy just right out of the gate attacking the basket. If you don't rotate over and stop the lane, you can't just rely on trying to block her shot because she does a terrific job of avoiding the defense. My neighbors called it disinformation about trying to guard her. She gives <laughs> off so many different looks, you don't know what she's going to do with basketball. I love it. Disinformation. She'll confuse you, that's for sure. UConn was led by Kristen Williams in the opening half with 12 points. Takes the shot there. It's off the mark. Williams playing in front of friends and family tonight as she's from Little Rock, Arkansas. But don't fall for that right hand. Don't fall for it. She's going to foul. We're talking about wanting to make the difference of wins and losses. Check this out. On the shot. Thomas, Dungy, boxing out, Griffin, and Nelson Adota. That's how you keep yourself in a ball game. There's been a different effort tonight from Arkansas and an intention to rebound the basketball. It's something that has hurt them and they have not done in games they've lost this season. And right there, Michaela Daniels attacking the basket. As Slocum, she gets out of that lane, leaves the lane open, and Daniels finds the lane and gets herself to the free throw line. And understand this, Mike Neighbors wants to get 40% of his points from the three-point line, 30% from layups, and the other 30% from the free throw line. He hasn't gotten to the free throw line as much in the first half as he would like, but from the three-point line, they've been money. Seven three-pointers for Arkansas, shooting 50% from three. They average nine threes a game. 
Here's Griffin. She had a big three-pointer in the corner before the half to give UConn the lead going into the locker room. Slocum. First points for Destiny Slocum. Layups and threes. Gina wants to talk about it. Arkansas on top. How about the bucket from Slocum? Well, when you're slow with getting your offense going, do this right here. Attack the basket. Get the easy two from the layup. Arkansas came out of the locker room and hit the gas against UConn. They have outscored them 11 to nothing in the third quarter. And Chelsea Dungey has led the charge. Destiny Slocum back to the free throw line. Dungey already has 19 points, four of those here in the early minutes of the third quarter. Slocum misses the first. You can tip off your weekend with some of the NBA's biggest stars on ESPN and the app. Giannis and the Bucks take on Zion and the Pelicans at 7.30 Eastern. Then Rudy Gobert and the Jazz have won 10 straight and now lead the West. They square off against Luka and the Mavs. Our NBA Friday coverage starts with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern. Paige Beckers with a three ball. She's up to eight points. You know, we're talking about the NBA, but what about the moves they're talking about in the WNBA right now? Rumors of Candace Parker possibly going to the sky. That would be huge because Candace Parker is from the Chicago area. And then the also talks of Kayla McBride possibly going to the Minnesota Lynx. Oh man, that'd be a great addition. It's gonna be an interesting next couple of days. Paige Beckers with back-to-back -back buckets. Remember, she only had five points in the first half. Dungey, can't miss right now. But remember, Gino Ariema challenged his freshman, Paige Becker, in the Tennessee game. He said, in order for us to win, you've got to shoot the ball. You've got to be aggressive. And I expect her to stay aggressive in this sec second half. And at times, they feel like she passes the ball too much. They want to use that shot. She is a deadly offensive weapon. As Kristen Williams drives in, she's going to the line. UConn had a two-point lead going into the locker room, but Arkansas came out and scored 11 straight points. What's going to change for UConn here? Aaliyah Edwards needs to get in the game. She has a height advantage, and if Nelson Adota doesn't want to get physical and make her presence felt inside for Connecticut, because there's nobody for the Arkansas team that can guard her. And so that can help your offense to attack and potentially even get a Chelsea Dungy in some foul trouble. But right now, zeros for Olivia Nelson Adota. Yeah, no rebounds, no points, and Dungey is on fire. When you're feeling it, you're feeling it. Westbrook answers. The other thing that Connecticut's got to do is they've got to find somebody who can guard Chelsea Dungey, and in the zone, she's just finding openings. UConn facing its largest deficit of the season. Had only trailed by seven points all year long. Dungey, even defensively, has turned the heat up. Newell kicks out to the corner. Slocum strips it away from Nelson Adota.
Q Davis. It's contagious. Ten three-pointers for Arkansas. Gina's going to probably have to call another timeout and regroup because when Arkansas gets rolling, they're hard to stop. There, Nelson Adota finally gets in the scores column. First score, first rebound for Olivia Nelson Adota. Played only 10 minutes in the first half, picked up two early fouls. Westbrook. Evina Westbrook trying to get something going for UConn, but called for the foul. Arkansas on top in Fayetteville. Well, coming up on Saturday, we've got these two SEC Big 12 Challenge games on ESPN. Number 15, Kansas, taking on number 18, Tennessee. And then also in Rupp Arena, number 5, Texas, taking on Kentucky. Those matchups coming up on Sunday. What a matchup we have here between UConn and Arkansas. Connecticut led at the half by two. Arkansas has outscored them 20 to 9 in the third quarter. Barnum on the rebound. But Chelsea Dungy has half of those 20 points in the third quarter. She's been aggressive, and when your best player is aggressive, it does become contagious. And you have Aaron Barnum getting to the offensive boards, gets the finish, and gets an opportunity at the free throw line. Carolyn, you called for it. Aaliyah Edwards is back in the game. She had a lot of success in the first half down low for UConn. And this big girl, Aaliyah Edwards, wants the ball inside. Possession arrow stays with UConn. You can already see the aggressiveness of Aaliyah Edwards. Six points went three for three in that first half. Beckers. Ramirez, not much help. And Chelsea Dungy is going back to the free throw line. Well, Mir McLean, a freshman, trying to guard Chelsea Dungy. Look, you learning on the job, and this is a tough one to learn against. Woo! But Dungy got away with a push-off right there. That could have been an offensive foul. Already That's what Gino's points. talking about. Yeah, the arm bar offensively. Dungy will work so hard to get to the free throw line. Nika Buell high up off the glass. That's going to be an offensive foul on Q Davis. I thought Chelsea Dungy got away with more than that. Mir McLean sold it though. Mike Neighbors didn't like that call. McLean. Seventh of three ball for UConn. Both teams shooting over 50% from the field in this game. Remember, they both average about 85 points per game. One of the things UConn prides itself on is its defense. They were holding teams to a little under 49 points a game. First in the nation in field goal percentage defense. First in the nation in scoring margin is UConn.
Westbrook double team. Beckers flashes to the corner, gets the three. First three of the night for Paige Beckers. And that was good defense by Arkansas. They did about just about any, everything they could do, just Beckers able to knock down the tough three. Arkansas is led by as many as 13 in the third quarter. Eight seconds for Dungy. And she's fouled by Edwards. Will fatigue That's become an issue? That's the four on Chelsea Dungy? No, on Aaliyah Edwards. Oh, and Edwards. That's big. Because she has been the big presence for Connecticut inside. More physical. Edwards had to come into the game when Olivia Nelson Adota got into foul trouble and gave UConn some really good minutes down low. Gino's going to leave her out there with four fouls. This is a player that has been hurting Arkansas and got four fouls. Best way to get her out of the game, draw that foul. And now Avina Westbrook flexing her muscles, trying to get the Huskies back in this ball game. UConn has hit its last four shots. showing a different effort on the rebounds tonight. This is Amber Ramirez from a distance. Doesn't matter, she could have stood in the parking lot. Amber Ramirez is back. Just two points in her last game. She's got 16 and has hit four three balls tonight. for Arkansas, impressive. 31 points, the most that UConn has given up in any quarter this season. And that three, that is not for the game. That is for the third quarter. They are six of seven. They have hit 12 three-pointers tonight. Again, the most threes UConn has given up. And Mike Neighbors talks about wanting 40% of his scoring coming from the three-point line in that third quarter. 50% of his scoring came from threes. Arkansas hit a season-high 16 threes in a game against SMU earlier this season. But we've seen some changes for UConn. Remember, Aaliyah Edwards fouled out. Gino Oriema has not put Olivia Nelson Adota back in the game. Yeah, he has Mir McLean inside, really playing a, a post position. She plays a four, but there's no five. There's no center on the floor for the UConn Huskies. They're taking a look at the shot clock right now just to make sure it's at the right spot. I don't believe it started. Now it's at six seconds. 
Chelsea Dungy will inbound for Arkansas. Daniels. Trying to get past Kristen Williams. Didn't get the shot off in time. I'm sure in that last timeout, Gino Ariema had a conversation with his team and he said, you know what? It's gut check. It's one-on-one, -on -one. accountability, guard your person, don't rely on help. We don't have a shot blocker. You've got to do your job defensively. UConn was tested a week ago tonight. They trailed by four points going into the fourth quarter at Tennessee. They passed that test. They won that game. Can they come back in Fayetteville tonight? That's a good start. The three from Avina Westbrook. Well, with the way that Paige Beckers can shoot the ball, and the step, the steady level head of the maturity of Avina Westbrook. UConn is not out of this one. Slocum driving. Arkansas ball. It'll stay with Arkansas. Avina Westbrook just takes good shots, smart shots, and she's deadly from the three-point line. Double figure points for Westbrook now for her last eight games as she has 16 this evening. Slocum took a hard hit. Destiny Slocum got off to a slow start, but she has been very aggressive in this second, second half. There she looked like maybe took a hit to the oh, noggin. She's still in. Arkansas just eight players available tonight. Becker, fade away. That freshman's pure. Hard to guard. Got great length. She can have vision to the basket. Chelsea Dungy again attacking the basket. She's getting away with a little push off. But McLean, I think, is not there. She's still moving. She gets called for the block. That's the third foul on Mir McLean. Remember Arkansas with a short bench tonight. These are the players who are not available due to COVID related issues. The good news is Arkansas only uses about eight players and the majority of them are available tonight. But conditioning could be a factor. Arkansas has been pushing the pace. I think there's a big difference being able to go 8D or 7D. Because it's one of the guards that's Jalen Mason that would be in the rotation on the perimeter. You still have Aaron Barnum. But that perimeter rotation, everybody's going to have to go the distance. Destiny Slocum steps back over to the line, did not score in the first half, has two points here in the second half. She averages 15 points per game. But they've gotten 30 points from Chelsea Dungy this evening. That is her 11th career game with 30 points. Do you remember in the first half, at the end of the first quarter, Chelsea Dungy, that's when she got her rest early. Mike Neighbors stole a couple of minutes to get her some rest before going into that second quarter so that his senior leader could go the distance. She really worked in the offseason to get in amazing shape. She's in great form this year. That should help her down the stretch in this game. Williams trying with all her might and finally it 
goes in. Just like we talked about, Chelsea Dungy doesn't want to lose. Neither does Kristen Williams coming home to play for the first time in her college career. Taylor Thomas with the hustle to save it. Arkansas has led by as many as 13 points in the second half. Dungy, 32 points. She just had such patience. She knows help's going to come, but it's not going to stay. It's just a little stunt, and then she takes advantage of the crease. Paige Becker's trying to keep Connecticut in this one. And one for the freshman. Beckers gets by Destiny Slocum and Michaela Daniels for the finish and a trip for a freebie. Beckers has gone back past Brianna Stewart for the most points by a freshman through 10 games. Remember, she didn't play in UConn's last game, so this is her 10th game. She's past Stewie. She's going to have one heck of a career at UConn. Starting out like this, wow. The number one overall recruit. It's going to be a UConn ball. Kristen Williams was also the number one player in her class. And remember, AZ Fudd, the number one all overall player for next year, is also committed to UConn. They just keep reloading. Daniels foul. We're starting to see a little bit more from that freshman Paige Becker. She had that huge shot to put UConn up for good against Tennessee with 25 seconds left. She's got it in her. She's got that toughness. She's got that moxie. Gets the first. The X Games get underway for the 20th straight year from Aspen on Friday. They're on ESPN and the app. You can see it at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. They'll have men's super ski super pipe with Alex Ferreira looking to win gold again this year. Just a one-point game in Fayetteville. Arkansas led by 13 in the third quarter. And McLean... He's able to draw that charge. Got to compliment the freshman of UConn. Mir McLean with the big defensive stop there, drawing the charge. What Aaliyah Edwards did when she came in. Nika Mule has come in and been aggressive offensively. And then you've got Paige Beckers. This is a young team. Bright future for the Huskies. Led by Avina Westbrook with a lot of experience. And UConn is back on top. Avina Westbrook, she brings age, she brings maturity, but you know what else she brings? A beautiful three-point shot. How about a freshman and a redshirt senior lighting it up in this game? Beckers has 21 points. Chelsea Dungy, the eighth player with 30-plus points against UConn since the 99-2000 season. Dungy's been doing it the whole game. Paige Becker's gotten turned up as of late, especially in the second half. Does she have enough to steal one on the road? UConn is on an 8-0 run, and Dungy will head to the free throw line. Well, this is what Arkansas is going to do down the stretch. They're going to go to Chelsea Dungy because Connecticut really has not found the answer of how you stop her because she is getting herself to the free throw line or if the defense stays and commits, she's finding shooters to kick the ball out to or the easy dump to her post players inside. UConn took the lead right before we stepped away, thanks to a three-pointer from Avina Westbrook, who has also been huge for the Huskies tonight. 19 points for her, five for five from three. Keep, an eye, on, keep an eye on rebounding. Right now, Connecticut, just a seven-rebound advantage. Becker's in and out. Ramirez, what a comeback for Amber Ramirez. 
her fifth three-pointer. The challenge from Mike Neighbors from his team after the Georgia loss was their intensity defensively. They have turned it up. There's some intense defensive shot clock violation for UConn. Mike Neighbors said he, even though it was a last second shot that he lost on to Georgia, he said, my team didn't deserve to win that game. He pointed out that after shooting a free throw, and he had all four players back. Georgia went the length of the court and shot a layup. He said they weren't ready defensively. They look ready today. And they've made a bigger effort to rebound the ball. Just a wide open lane for Ramirez. Gino Oriemo wants to take a timeout. Arkansas trying to upset another top five opponent. Arkansas is just one in five against ranked opponents this season, but look who that one is. It was number four Baylor back in December. But look at the Texas A&M game, one point game. Georgia game, two point game. That has caught the attention and Chelsea Dungy wants to get off this four game losing skid to ranked teams and she has played like she wants to make a difference today. I'd say so, 34 points for Dungy. Door to Beckers, kicks to Westbrook. Second chance for UConn. Mule. Olivia Nelson Adota back in the game for UConn. Just two points and one rebound for Nelson Adota. She's only played 17 minutes. She's a monster tonight. So on the scouting report, don't let Dungy go left. Well, she's showing, hey, I can go right. How you like me now? 36 points for Chelsea Dungy. Her career high, by the way, is 41. There's still time. She has come out from the opening tip with the mentality and an effort in this game. I don't think we've seen this season from her. It's just been different tonight. I think that she had it in the Georgia game. She just didn't have teammates to go along with her. Amber Ramirez has gotten on that train today. Taylor Thomas has gotten on that train today. The way she has defended and rebounded inside. That three is a 10-0 run by Arkansas. Beckers at 24 points. Nelson and Dota with the stop of Dungy. And that's why Nelson and Dota got a chance to come back in the game. UConn needs a shot blocker, a rim protector in the ball game. Arkansas came out of the locker room at halftime and scored 11 straight points. They put up 31 points in the third quarter. At the buzzer. Slocum. Asked Mike Neighbors after the Georgia game if the, the confidence of the team had been broken. He said, we've been shaken but not broken. And he expected them to come out and be very competitive today.
We've talked so much about Chelsea Dungy. Well, Destiny Slocum also has done her part. It's contagious. Everybody, right now, for the Arkansas Razorbacks, they're trying to end the losing streak versus ranked teams. It was just Monday night that Mike Neighbors and his crew lost on a last-second shot to Georgia. They remember that feeling. It has not gone anywhere. Just a minute 32 away from another top 25 win. Saturday, we'll have a full slate of college hoops, starting with these two SEC Big 12 Challenge games. Kansas and Tennessee are up first. That one's at 6 p.m. Eastern. Then we head over to Rupp Arena for Texas and Kentucky. That's coming up on Saturday. Both games, Sonic Blockbusters. Now, Arkansas just needs to one-on-one. -on -one. Make sure you're making UConn take a contested shot. But, ooh, Peyton Wagner. Knocking down a contested three. The freshman. Beckers with 27 points. This is good defense by Taylor Thomas. The Beckers behind the men's three-point line. Steps back. Eyes it, dives it and knocks it down. A new career high for Paige Beckers of 27 points. UConn down by five with a minute 15 to go. And UConn only has one timeout left. Arkansas has two. 15 points in the fourth quarter alone for Paige Beckers. You think she could turn it on in a close game? Oh, yeah. We saw it in Knoxville. There's one minute, one minute left to the game. Nelson Adota. Beckers to Williams. Three point play possible for the Arkansas native Kristen Williams. Gina wanted Kristen Williams to have the ball right there. Is it Slocum? She was in that restricted area. That's why the, it was called the block. Kristen Williams grew up in Little Rock, Arkansas. Won a state title as a senior back home in the state of Arkansas for the first time. Can she help her team avoid the upset? Shot clock still on. Dungy with the ball for Arkansas. It's a one possession game. Mike Neighbors calls timeout. Arkansas is trying to avoid another close loss. It's already happened twice in conference play. Back on January 10th, facing a talented Texas A&M team, Jordan Nixon hits a last second shot. Arkansas can't get the shot off. They don't get the foul call, and they lose to Texas A&M by one. Then on Monday, it was Gabby Connolly of Georgia knocking down a huge jumper with .9 seconds to again hand Arkansas another loss against a ranked opponent. And now Arkansas has the ball. They've got to make sure that they take care of the basketball. And when they go to the free throw line, they got to knock it down.
Mike Neighbors is having a blast. He has, he's been like a kid the day before on Christmas Eve, looking forward to playing this game and having the Connecticut Huskies come to Fayetteville, Arkansas. It was a last second addition to the schedule, but we're certainly glad it was put down because what a game we've had at Fayetteville tonight. Arkansas with the basketball. Shot clock is still on, 12 seconds. UConn trying to double team to keep the ball from Chelsea Dungey, but not able to. Ramirez has been deadly in this game too. Here goes UConn. Gino Oriema calls timeout, but just point three is showing on the clock. But Connecticut should not be able to advance the basketball because of the dribble, the dribble advancing. Did she get it off before the shot clock expired? They'll go to the monitor and take a look at this. Live, they did not call it a shot clock violation. They let the ball come into the hands of UConn. Connecticut is going to need a three to tie it up. Take a look at the shot clock in yellow when Amber Ramirez drives this ball. Does she let the ball leave her hand before it hits zero? Ooh. That's close. Remember, they originally said it was not a shot clock violation. Yeah, but still right there when Krista Williams got the rebound, she should have automatically called a timeout. Then, then Connecticut could have advanced the basketball. Mike Neighbors in Arkansas looking for their second win over a top five team this season. The first one was a big one back in December. How about this for a Christmas present? Taking on number four, Baylor. Arkansas only hit five threes in this game, but they hit 30 free throws and they forced 22 turnovers in that game. Their first top five win under Mike Neighbors, their first top five win since 2003. Mike Neighbors talked about how Baylor was coming off, uh, just had just played a game at South Florida, came into Fayetteville. His team did not shoot the ball great, but they've stayed aggressive and were able to get, as you talked about, those free throw attempts. Just point three for UConn. Beckers can't get open. Westbrook's shot is off the mark. Arkansas does it again. It's a great day in the neighborhood for Mike Neighbors and Arkansas. Their second win over a top five team this season. It was all on the shoulders of Chelsea Dungy. Dungy with 37 points, with the refuse to lose mentality and the rest of the Razorbacks, they got right on her back. The first meeting for Arkansas, excuse me, the first win for Arkansas over UConn and Chelsea Dungy, 37 points. Well, she stayed in that middle third of the basketball court down the middle and 
UConn just could not find an answer whenever she wanted to get to the rack. And then from the perimeter, from the three-point line, just showing the versatility of her game. Wow, she put on a show tonight. The 11th time in her career, she has had over 30 points. It couldn't have come at a bigger time. Arkansas upsets UConn in Fayetteville. Your final score, 90 to 87 Razorbacks.